My curveball. Your curveball. For the starters. Let's get to the curveball starter. What does this look like? Curious. Who who are you picturing in, in your head when I say this? You guys both were like Ricky, but I think that was well, for I'm, the bit more yeah. than it was a, oh, yeah. a serious yeah. answer. Um, KJ. Nah. Kyle likes shooting too much. Eric the, Gordon's the, the only one I would consider. So I was going to say, this is not even about what I want. I don't shoot the messenger here, everyone. He's going Andre Drummond. You're going, no. you're going <laughs> Kyle. No, I, you were on it. It's Eric Gordon. Okay. I think there is a non-zero chance that Eric Gordon starts. Yeah, I agree. He was, he, like I said, when I started this, there was a sixth, six people that I would consider. Yeah. <clears throat> so here, there are a few reasons for this. One, I brought up the, the politics earlier. Eric Gordon declining his option and then being one of the very first minimum or not the low value <laughs> contract guys that they signed that normally telegraphs like someone was given some assurances that they're going to have a pretty sizable role for this team. So that's number one. Number two, the shooting, right? Like he is very comfortable and confident as a, not just a, to call him just a spot up guy, I think does a disservice to a shooting because he's comfortable as like a thirty feet out spot up shooter. You can remember Brett Brown used to have what they called the four point sure. line. Eric Gordon's taking a lot of four pointers and, and is like okay with just hanging back there and taking those shots. And if you really want to optimize the amount of spacing that you're getting for Joel Embiid, Paul George, Tyrese Maxey, that's a path to getting it. But as we move into this next section. The, the bench groups. Mm -hmm. Part of the other reason that I think you might end up seeing him start is that if he gets put into that first bench group with Joel Embiid, either you have to just play him with that group or you're going to potentially end up in scenarios where you be you have lineups where it's like Kyle Lowry, Tyrese Maxey, and Eric Gordon all on the floor at the same time. I would like to avoid that at yeah. basically all costs. And I'm not sure how you give Eric Gordon a role that's sizable enough for him to be happy with while also avoiding the defensive pitfalls of having 8 billion small guards on the roster. And so that's why I'm not saying that I endorse it. I'm not saying I want it. I'm not even saying that I want Eric Gordon as a like nailed-on rotation player every night. But if we're going in assuming that's going to be the case, and I think all of us probably believe that he's going to be at least initially one of the the nine to ten guys will be in that first rotation, I think that might be a way around some of the the pitfalls of playing him. Interesting. Oh, look, when we let's go back. To and that the, would be over Kelly. Yeah, because so then the other side Kelly. of it is like Kelly then comes in off the bench and he's more of that. That's where that I was going. Spark plug, energy, athleticism. He's and I think that makes sense for him, right? Six men to come in yes. and wreak havoc. And as people like to say, the chaos thing going on right now. And he'll take media. more shots, and he right? Will. If he comes, yeah. so if if we're assuming mm -hmm. that Joel stays in, Tyrese, Paul come out, Kelly comes into a situation where now he has more opportunities to mm -hmm. score, create, shoot, handle, whatever you want to frame it. And that might end up working out better for him. So we'll see. I think it, the the good thing is I don't think they're going to be necessarily married to one group. I don't think that's how Nick Nurse looks at it. I don't think they should do it that way. But I just wanted to throw that out there as something I've been thinking about over the last couple of weeks of so, couple of weeks or so as this roster has shaken out. Yeah. So the Kelly piece is the one that I go back to Melton. I go back to Ubre when we would discuss them last season. I think ideally in their perfect roles, they are guys that come off the bench and do their work. And I, I still think that Kelly Oubre is that. The only thing when we talk about this specific roster and, and the construction and the lineup that we put together already, it's because of what he did show us in mm -hmm. the big spots there. Once Melton was out, Kelly Oubre maintained that. He didn't lose it because we kept waiting. All right, somehow, some way he's going to lose it and he's going to be back on the bench. But... Nick Nurse stuck with him. And even in the postseason when Kyle Lowry was starting and you needed some more scoring off the bench, they couldn't find it from anywhere. Kelly Oubre was still in that starting five. So he did it enough where, at least for right now, the Eric Gordon thing is intriguing for the shooting and all of that and the balance of the rotation to make things look much better with Embiid on the floor. 
But ideally, yeah, if you had it the right way, Kelly Oubre for me is still a guy that's going to come off the bench as a legit number six guy, six star, six starter basically, and the sixth man that's just going to come in and do Kelly Oubre stuff, get you about 12 to 14 points, go off at times, and as you said, shoot the ball quite a bit because that's the role that they're asking to come off the bench and play. I mean, the, the, the real rub of it, though, is you've got two guys in Gordon and Oubre who should both be coming off the bench in a perfect world, mm-hmm. which is part of the reason why – part of the reason is also because this is Daryl's last real crack to get a rotation player, but part of the reason why we'll be spending a lot of January and February talking about trade candidates, they're not perfect. Kelly Oubre is borderline non-shooting, and his numbers are low enough where, like, you will abandon him in the playoffs. That's a factor. That's a significant factor. He's not a perfect fifth starter, um, but you're working with what you have. And his defense is, that was the one thing that very consistently impressed me last year was his defense, his defensive buy-in, his versatility. Um, I think that's probably why I put him in that fifth starting spot. Gordon is definitely a better shooter. Gordon Mm -hmm. has some defensive versatility because of his wingspan and his strength. Uh, He's lost a step over the last couple of years. I was about to say, does he still? I mean, some. He's not anywhere near perfect. He's more, probably more versatile than he is competent as a one-on-one defender. Right. Um, none of them are perfect. It's easier to get away with his issues playing with Joel Embiid behind him and not next to Bradley Beal. Yeah. It will probably help him a little bit. But, yeah, he didn't look great last year on that front. Yeah, and his was a lot of frustration, too, just with that situation that was going on in Phoenix. And I always give a lot of uh, leeway to guys that, number one, playing with Joel Embiid. But number two, when you're a veteran like that who does have a good defensive profile, even though you get older, you still know angles. You know where to be. You're a good team defender for what you're asked to do. And then the big fella will clean up a lot and stay out of foul trouble in in that spot Mm -hmm. uh, overall. 